This is a reading from Catholic Prophecy, The Coming Chastisement by Yves Dupont. Fifty four Father Freina Demitz Freina Demitz twentieth century All foreign missionaries shall soon be expelled from China. You will have to walk hundreds of miles before you can find a priest. Even then, your journey will often be fruitless. Some priests and some Catholics shall apostatize. A war shall break out once all foreign missionaries have been expelled. Then some foreign powers shall occupy the whole of China and shall divide it into zones. One of the occupying powers will be pitiless and very hard on the people. But during this period, nearly the whole of China shall turn to Christianity. <clears throat> Comment. This prophecy was made in 1906 in China, where Father Freina Demetz was a missionary. It is certainly significant today. In my opinion, Russia will be the pitiless occupying power, but it is not possible to say whether Russia will be converted first, then join the Allies to crush Chinese communism, or will wage war first and be converted later. I am inclined to think that it will be as follows. Soviet Russia fights communist China. At the same time, or shortly afterwards, the period of chaos and anarchy begins in Western Europe. Soviet Russia meets with great difficulties in China, and the war goes on and on. Revolution breaks out in Russia. Communism collapses. The new Russian government asks for the assistance of the USA and other powers, which is granted. Altogether, they defeat China and occupy the land but the occupying Russian troops have not yet renounced their former ways of dealing with their enemies, hence their ruthlessness. <clears throat> 55. The Prophecy of Premol, 5th century. Everywhere there is war. People and nations are pitted against each other. War, 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 civil and foreign wars, mourning and death everywhere, famine over the whole world. Will you teach us? Paris, be destroyed. Why, O Lord, dost thou not stop all this with thy arm? Must also the elements be the instrument of thy wrath? Enough, O Lord, enough. The cities are destroyed. The natural elements are set loose. The earth quakes everywhere. But mercy, mercy for Rome. But thou hearest not my entreaties, and Rome also collapses in tumult. And I see the king of Rome with his cross and his tiara, shaking the dust off his shoes and hastening in his flight to other shores. The church, O Lord, is torn apart by her own children. One camp is faithful to the fleeing pontiff, the other is subject to the new government of Rome, which has broken the tiara. But Almighty God will, in his mercy, put an end to this confusion, and a new age will begin. Then, said the Spirit, this is the beginning of the end of time. <clears throat> Comment. From this prophecy it is clear that the true Church will be faithful to the Pope in exile, whereas the new Pope in Rome will be, in fact, an anti-Pope. But, since a number of other prophecies tell us that the true Pope will die in his exile, it follows then that the true Church will be leaderless for some time. Then it is not difficult to anticipate what the anti-Pope and renegade hierarchy and clergy will say. See, your so-called Pope is dead, and who can give you a new Pope now? Our cardinals have already elected a new Pope. He is here in Rome. And indeed, since the true Church will be completely disorganized and the faithful cardinals isolated, no tr new true Pope could be elected, and thus a large number of Catholics will be misled into accepting the leadership of the anti-Pope. Such a schism could not happen if the Pope followed Anne Catherine Emmerich's advice to stay in Rome. But, she said, the Pope is still attached to the things of the earth, and as is said everywhere, and as is said elsewhere, he will want to save what he thinks can be saved. In other words, the true Pope, whoever he is at that time, will use his human judgment and leave Rome, instead of remaining firm in the face of the invaders. <coughs> fifty six Maria Steiner nineteenth century. I see the Lord as he will be scourging the world and chastising it in a fearful manner, so that few men and women will remain. The monks 
will have to leave their monasteries, and the nuns will be driven from their convents, especially in Italy. The Holy Church will be persecuted, and Rome will be without a shepherd. But the Lord show me how beautiful the world will be after this awful punishment. 57. Worden d'Otrante, 13th century. The great monarch and the great pope will precede Antichrist. The nations will be at war for four years, and a great part of the world will be destroyed. The pope will go over the sea carrying the sign of redemption on his forehead. The great monarch will come to restore peace, and the pope will share in the victory. Peace will reign on earth. 58. Blessed Johannes Amadeus de Silva. 15th century. In the latter days there shall be great wars and bloodshed. Whole provinces shall be left despoiled and uninhabited, and cities deserted by the people. The nobility shall be slaughtered, and influential people ruined, with many changes of kings, commonwealths, and rulers. Germany and Spain will unite under a great prince chosen by God, but, because of Germany's unfaithfulness, the war will be prolonged until all countries unite under the great ruler. After this union, mass conversions will take place by the command of God, and peace and prosperity will follow. 59. Sister Rosa Asdenti di Taggia, 19th century. A great revolution shall spread over all of Europe, and peace will not be restored until the white flower, the lily, has taken possession of the throne of France. Not only religious communities, but also good lay Catholics shall have their properties confiscated. A lawless, democratic spirit of disorder shall reign supreme, and there will be a general overthrow. There shall be great confusion of people against people, and nations against nations, with clashing of arms and beating of drums. The Russians and Prussians shall come to Italy, some bishops shall fall from the faith, but many more will remain steadfast and suffer much for the church. Priests and religious shall be butchered, and the earth, especially in Italy, shall be soaked with their blood. Comment. Here again we have the confirmation of East Germany's work of destruction, called Prussia, as in all other prophecies. It is, th it is interesting to note that the majority of bishops will remain steadfast, perhaps when the chips are down, they will perform better than they did during the Vatican II Council. 60. Sister Marianne Gaultier, 18th century. So long as public prayers are said, nothing shall happen. But a time will come when public prayers shall cease. People will say, things will remain as they are. It is then that the great calamity shall occur. Before the great battle, the wicked shall be the masters, and they will do all the evil in their power, but not so much as they will desire, because they shall not have enough time. The good and faithful Catholics, less in number, shall be on the point of being annihilated, but a stroke from heaven will save them. Such extraordinary events shall take place that the most incredulous shall be forced to say, The finger of God is here. O oh, power of God, there shall be a terrible night during which no one shall be able to sleep. These trials shall not last long, because no one could endure them. When all shall appear lost, all will be saved. It is then that dispatches shall arrive, announcing good news. It is then that the prince shall reign, whom people will seek, that before did not esteem him. The triumph of religion shall be so great, that no one has ever seen the equal. All injustices shall be righted. Civil laws shall be enacted in harmony with the law of God and of the Church. The education given to children will be most Christian. Pious guilds for workmen shall be restored. Comment. Many of the prophecies which I have so far quoted are repetitive, but every one of them adds something new besides the description of the main events. Here we have an interesting reference to public prayers. They will cease because people will think that things will remain as they are anyway. Seen in the light of the current crisis in the Church, this statement is significant. How many times have we not heard it said, Communism is here to stay. We must seek a compromise. We must reach some understanding. We must dialogue and work together for the betterment of mankind. I could cite actual quotations of such instances of wishful thinking. Not a few priests have been led to believe that com communism indeed works for the betterment of mankind. 
Not a few priests are of the opinion that individual prayer is futile and social action the only possible answer to the world's ills. Even Rome has decided that it is no longer necessary to pray for the conversion of Russia after each Mass. Rome has even received Soviet, Soviet dignitaries with smiles and gifts while their henchmen were torturing priests in Bulgaria and elsewhere. The very day that a priest was challenged to renounce his faith or die, I think it was in Bulgaria, Pope Paul VI was shaking hands with Podgorny in the Vatican. This heroic priest's answer was, I believe in God. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. My master is the Pope, and the Pope will never shake hands with murderers. Why should I? He was slaughtered on the spot. Meantime, Paul VI was exchanging diplomatic smiles with the murderers. 61. Brother, Brother Louis Rocco, 19th century. Terrible wars will rage all over Europe. God has long been patient with the corruption of morals. Half of mankind he will destroy. Russia will witness many outrages. Great cities and small towns alike will be destroyed in a bloody revolution that will cause the death of half the population. In Istanbul, Constantinople, the cross will replace the half-moon of Islamism and Jerusalem will be the seat of a king. The southern Slavs will form a great Catholic empire and dry, drive out of Europe the Turks, Mohammedans, who will withdraw to North Africa and subsequently embrace the Catholic faith. 62. Marie de la Faudé, 19th century. There will come three days of complete darkness. Only blessed candles made of wax will give some light during this horrible darkness. One candle will last for three days, but they will not give light in the houses of the godless. Lightning will penetrate your houses, but it will not put out the blessed candles. Neither wind nor storm nor earthquake will put out the blessed candles. Red clouds like blood will cross the sky, and the crash of thunder will shake the earth to its very core. The ocean will cast its foaming waves over the land, and the earth will be turned into a huge graveyard. The bodies of the wicked and of the righteous will cover the face of the earth. The famine that follows will be severe. All plant life will be destroyed, as well as three-fourths of the human race. This crisis will be sudden, and the punishment will be worldwide. 63. Also Linsky Prophecy, 19th century. The western lion, betrayed by its emancipated slaves, shall unite with the cock and put a young man on the throne. This time, the strength of the disturbers of the earth is broken forever. Brother shall shake hands with brother, and the enemy shall withdraw to a faraway country. At the rising sun, the hammer is broken. When the black eagle and the hammer invade foreign, country, foreign countries, they shall perish on a river. The bear falls after its second expedition. The Danube shines again in splendor. The barbarians, stricken with great fear, flee in disarray to Asia. Comment. The symbolism, the symbolism of this prophecy presents no difficulties, but not everyone is acquainted with the language of many prophets. Here, therefore, is the translation. England, the Western Lion, betrayed by her former colonies, which are still formerly members of the Commonwealth, will unite with France and put a young prince on the throne. The strength of the communists is broken forever, and the enemy withdraws to a distant country. In China, the communist hammer is broken. When communism unites with Prussia, East Germany, they will both be defeated on the banks of the Rhine River, a correlation from other prophecies. Soviet Russia will collapse after her second expedition. The Chinese, stricken with fear, flee back to their country. From this and from inferences drawn from other prophecies, it seems that Soviet Russia and Communist China will be at war, and Russia will suffer military setbacks. At the same time, or shortly before, East Germany will wage war in the West with the support of Soviet Russia, but they will both be defeated in Westphalia by the great king who will be in command of all the Western forces. These events will take place towards the end of the great disaster, not at the beginning. There will be a bloody revolution in Russia, perhaps as a result of her military defeats. Communis communism will be overthrown. The new government will ask for U.S. support against China, and the Chinese will be defeated. 
and their country occupied. 64. Maria de Tilly, 19th century. I see a great darkness and lightning. Paris will be almost com entirely destroyed by fire. Marseille also will be destroyed, and other cities as well. Comment. The darkness is that of the prolonged night when tremendous lightning will streak across the sky from east to west and north to south. 65. Countess Francesca de Bigliante, 20th century. I see yellow warriors and red warriors marching against Europe. Europe will be completely covered with a yellow fog that will kill the cattle in the fields. The, those, nation, those nations which have rebelled against the law of Christ will perish by fire. Europe will then be too large for them, to who, for them who survive. May the Lord grant to my grandchildren the grace of persevering in the true faith. 66. American Prophecy, 20th Century The yellow hordes of the rising sun and the troops of the Middle Kingdom will pour out their wrath on the people of the island kingdom, which had gathered riches through trade. Comment. I have mislaid the exact reference concerning this prophecy, which I received many years ago, but I am quoting it because it confirms others of the same kind. 67. Helen Walraff, 19th century. Some day a pope will flee from Rome in the company of only four cardinals, and they will come to Cologne. Comment. This prophecy lends credibility to what I have said before. Only four cardinals will be with the Pope. The other faithful cardinals will be isolated in various countries and unable to communicate because of the chaotic conditions prevailing then, and they will be in no position to elect a new Pope when the Pope of that time dies in his exile. As a result, the Roman anti-Pope will be able to persuade many Catholics that he is the true Pope. This prophecy says that the Pope will come to Cologne. There are others, too, which say that he will go to Germany, but many more insist that he will go overseas. Perhaps he will go to Germany before going overseas. 68. Bishop George M. Whitman, 19th century. Very sad times are coming for the Holy Church of Jesus Christ. The passion of our Lord Jesus will be renewed in a most painful manner in the Church and in her supreme head. Brutal hands will be laid upon his person. Secret societies will work great ruin, and they will exercise a great financial power. Comment. It is not possible here to discuss the very important question of economics. Economics, admittedly, is a complex science, and the various existing schools teach conflicting principles. One thing is certain. Today's economics are not designed for the fervorance of popular prosperity but for the benefit of a few manipulators. The working force provides the real wealth of a nation. The working force provides the goods and should be able, therefore, to enjoy the benefits which these goods bring them. In actual fact, most salaries are totally inadequate, with the result that more goods are produced than can be sold. Alternatively, goods are produced which do not contribute at all to popular prosperity, but only help the manipulators to increase their stranglehold on the working force. Banks, for instance, which are necessary to a point and deserve a decent remuneration for the services they provide, are accumulating wealth all out of proportion to the work they do. They are continually putting up new skyscrapers for more office suites, more businesses, and more exploitation of the working class, while the man in the street cannot even afford a house for his family. We hear a great deal about development and national prosperity, but such development and prosperity benefit only the financiers, in fact, the so-called national prosperity is in the hands of a very few, and it is no right-wing extremism to claim that money is controlled by a Judeo-Masonic clique. 69. Franciscan Friar, 18th century. All the religious orders will be suppressed except one, the rule of which will be as rigid and severe as that of the monks of the past. During these calamities the Pope will die, as a result, the most painful anarchy will prevail within the Church. Three popes will vie for the pontifical throne, one German, one Italian, and another Greek. They will all be installed by the armed might of three factions. 70. Ida Pierre de May, 20th century. 
I clearly see the land of Italy before my eyes. It is as if a terrible storm were breaking out. I am forced to listen, and I hear a word, exile. 71. Blessed Gaspar del Bufalo, 19th century. The death of the impenitent persecutors of the church will take place during the three days of darkness. He who outlives the darkness and the fear of these three days will think that he is alone on earth because the whole world will be covered with carcasses. Comment This prophecy confirms what I have said before. The passage of the comment will be the turning point, God's answer to the arrogance of the wicked, the end of the persecutions and wholesale murders. But why does Blessed Gaspar use the word carcasses instead of bodies? Because, as I believe, human bodies will be, in many cases, indistinguishable from animal carcasses, being burnt, burnt and blackened by the fires that will rage over the land.